last week's video has made me cry. Mm. Uh, but this BuzzFeed video, I swear to Jesus Christ, like, uh, uh, like, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm fine. We're fine. We're good. I'm just, oh my God. Okay, so BuzzFeed is a, I don't actually know. <laughs> um, they have a website, and then they also have a YouTube channel, and several, actually, <laughs> but it's all connected to BuzzFeed, um, and they have, like, hundreds of employees, and just people who work for the company, and just, like, do what they're passionate about, and edit videos, and make videos of things that are important to them, and just share their stories, which is incredible, like, literally have a low-key dream of working at BuzzFeed because that would be amazing but I know so many people love BuzzFeed and they like want to work for BuzzFeed because of BuzzFeed's like platforms now but I still kind of do and like I don't know if like I could ever like pursue it but I would be willing to try but I also know how quickly I give up at things and I just like lose confidence so quickly and i'm like try like my goal like in life <laughs> is to like not be so self like like hate myself as much and also to like gain some confidence at least a little bit because <laughs> like right now i have like next to fucking none um maybe even negative amount of confidence you know like <laughs> mm. um but then also, like, not give up. Because I feel like a lot of the reason why I give up so easily on things is because I think I'm not good enough. And I think because I failed once, I can never do it again. Because if you're a failure once, you'll always be a failure. And that's so stupid. And it's so not true. And I know that. But my insecurities love to prey on any little doubt I have. And just drive me insane sometimes they like prevent me from even moving or doing anything in the day and ah, it's just ugh, like it's just really annoying <laughs> but I'm like my goal is to by the time I'm like out in the real world and have graduated from high school at least I hope that through therapy that I'm starting to get because I have my first appointment this month i'm actually gonna change it though because like the appointment that i have for like uh my therapist this month like my first um therapist appointment which i'm so excited for oh my god i'm so excited for because like literally have not had therapy since like i was like nine years old and it was required and they only gave it to me for like a year and like it was a lot of bullshit therapists so I'm really excited because this time I'm actually looking forward to therapy, like, because, like, I know that this is going to help me, and I know that it's a healing process, and I get to talk to someone professional, and they're going to give me, like, actual advice on what the fuck to do with my shit, you know? <laughs> um, I really hope they don't prescribe me, like, fucking medication or anything, though, because, like, I'm fucking going to, like, unless it's absolutely necessary, I'm going to reject it because I hate medication. Like, just no. Like, just no. Just no, please. <laughs> this is absolutely necessary. Like, I like if they offered me medications, I would ask them. Like, is this actually necessary for me to feel better, or is it just the faster route out? Um, because like sometimes therapists will do that, and they'll be like, if you want the fastest process ever, or the faster process, or the quicker process, we're gonna give you medication. But if I can take the slow process and go through like months or even like a year of therapy which I'm like gonna continue doing therapy even like after I'm like cured of whatever I'm doing because like therapy is like you can never go wrong with therapy and like I have so many mood swings and like just fluctuations in like my behavior and like <laughs> sorry um oh I can taste my lunch um <laughs> That, like, I feel like I need it. Because, like, it's just, like, I it needs something to keep me grounded. So, 
Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Okay, I'm just really excited. But I'm going to have to cancel for this month, which I already thought I was going to have to cancel because, like, the person that I talked to on the phone yesterday, she was, like, had a date and it's, like, too early because I'm going to be gone in Honduras by that time. And I was like, <laughs> no. But she said that was, like, the only time that they had. And I was like, well, shit okay then but i'm not gonna be here and she's like well i'm sorry and i'm just like okay fine then okay then a little bit like ugh. <sighs> so yeah i'm just gonna have to like have me or my mom call them and just be like you know like we can't make it i told you we couldn't make it in the beginning but you didn't want to say that like or accept that so like we're gonna say it now last minute so that you can like fit in whoever else needs your time because i'm sure there are plenty of other people who need your time but I can't fit in there, which I told you beforehand, but you didn't, like, you wouldn't let me do the Sometimes I really don't like the Medicare system, like, medical system. Just, ugh, it's, 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 it's so frustrating. Plus, I was, like, on hold for, like, 30 minutes, maybe. Like, it was a long time. I was a little bit frustrated, okay? Um, but, <laughs> plus, me on hold is, like, Oh, it's bad. Like, I get so antsy when I'm on hold. Like, I just, I'm just like, I did that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to cancel for that time period or that date and, like, ask for one in August because that's when I'm actually going to be back. Or in the last few months of, I mean, few <laughs> few weeks of July because, like, that's when I'm actually going to be, be back because I'm not going to be back, you know, when. Yeah, no, no, no. First few weeks of July, August. Oh my God, I cannot talk about just. Ugh, I English is just. <laughs> um. But anyways, this video on Buzzfeed made me. Oh my God, I I start with Buzzfeed and then I just like just. Mm. Yeah, like that's so cool. Like, hi, like you just. <laughs> um, okay, sweetie, like. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> so this BuzzFeed video that I was watching is basically on these two girls. Both of them have chronic pain, which means they constantly have pain and like. It never leaves them. It's not like a headache that it's just there for a little bit and then it's really bad and then it goes away. Like, no, no, no. It's constant. Like, they're 24-7. It varies in degrees sometimes, but it's always there. And that, to me, is just, like, really sad. But, like, you can't, like, help. <sighs> okay, anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, well, these two girls, they have chronic illness or chronic pain one of them has chronic pain in her vaginal area I don't remember what it is exactly but she has like pain in that area which I don't know if I could like do that because like that's okay anyways and then the other girl um oh and that one girl who has the vaginal chronic pain she was born with it and then the other girl who has chronic pain she has it in like her face area like, it's weird. She, like, her nerves were damaged in her face. So, like, half of her face is, like, numb. And then the other half of her face is just pain. <laughs> and, or sometimes, like, the numbness, like, turns into pain. It's, it's complicated to explain unless you're, like, feeling it, which I haven't felt it. So, like, I don't know how to explain it properly. Um, but regardless, like, they both deal with chronic pain in different areas of their bodies. But still dealing with chronic pain. So they, like, understand, like, what it's like to feel chronic pain. And, um, they both have made, like, a few videos on BuzzFeed previously of, like, going through the cures of chronic pain. So, like, certain therapies or even, like, um, medicines and, like, other stuff. And, um, even, like, crystal, uh, like, <laughs> um, what is it called? Oh, I don't know, but, like, it's kind of, like, um, Wicca, sort of, I think, and they, like, use crystals and stuff to, like, have healing powers, and they use, I did that, too, but didn't work, obviously, <clears throat> and so, um, 
they just the only thing that kind of works for them is marijuana which marijuana works for pain marijuana okay here's the thing about drugs drugs are were intended like throughout the times as like medicinal purposes but people use them for other purposes as well or some people who use them for medicinal purposes use them too much and then it becomes a drug problem and so in reality like drugs are still medicine but like you just have to be careful with how much you take and like how your body's going to react to it and blah, blah 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 but like people don't like care about that they just care about like what the drug does to them like how their body reacts positively to it and if even if it becomes like an addiction they still want it because it helps with various problems like whether physical or mental um or they just want it because like it's cool thing and then eventually they get addicted to it which unfortunately happens a lot with drugs anyways so these two girls they take marijuana because it helps with their pain um so i mean so like it's just medicinal purpose um purposes <laughs> but um so this particular video they were doing another treatment but it's like this laser treatment thingy but it's not in america it's in i think it's uh bolivia right wait no no no, no. it was like the bahamas or something because it starts with a b but then it's like an island it's like a caribbean island i think right <laughs> i don't remember like i had the worst fucking memory of all time which apparently has something to do with adhd which wonder why um <laughs> with my attention span you know um anyways um so they go there and they're like both of them are like insane because like they have to fly on the plane and like they're upset about that because like or they're scared about that because they're both kind of like mild agoraphobics which means that they're afraid to leave the house because inside their house they have all of the medicine and all of the like heating pads and all of the like things and like little medical like gadgets and stuff that like help them with their pain and they're comfortable in their house um but like outside like you don't know how you're gonna react like how much the pain is gonna like inflate uh, because of certain situations or what you eat or what happens to you when you're outside. So they're mild agoraphobics just because they're afraid of what will happen with their pain. And so them flying to the Bee Island, I'm just going to call it the Bee Island because I don't remember what it starts with. I mean, I don't remember the full name of the island. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, so they're terrified because like this is completely out of their comfort zone. They don't like being outside of their house very much, let alone flying across the country. So they pack like all of their medicine and their like packages and everything that they possibly can to make themselves comfortable, along with like the average normal like packing stuff like clothes, toiletries, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so then they pack and then they go um, to like the bee, the, the, bee, <laughs> the bee island. And, um, they meet with this woman, and she's like a doctor, obviously. <laughs> and she's like talking with the laser treatments and saying how she thinks it's gonna work and blah 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 blah. And right off the bat, you can tell that this doctor cares. It's not just like, oh, this is my job, like this is what I'm doing, because like it is like good. Like her clinic is pretty small, and like you can tell it's not like a like a it's like a, it's not like a hospital. It's like a small clinic and you can tell she cares like because she like is really friendly she jokes around like she's not one of those who's just kind of like get on the table like i mean like do your stuff like she's not one of those and which was like really cool because like it showed that she cared and then they were doing the treatments and they were talking about their struggles and stuff and she's like very understanding and then later on in the video it got to why she's so understanding and it's because the whole reason that she became a doctor and started the laser treatments for chronic pain is because her own daughter has chronic pain or had chronic pain and then she was like researching chronic pain and like the symptoms and everything and like what it does to a person and then she was also like trying to figure out like treatments for it and then she found out this laser treatment and she tried it on her daughter and it worked and then 
So she opened up a clinic, and then, like, she's had, like, a few, like, more than a few. Like, from what they showed, there's probably, like, a significant amount, but they only showed about, like, maybe seven or eight other patients of hers who had chronic illness or chronic pain, and then she did the laser treatment on them, and it worked. And so they were just kind of, like, given hope that, like, maybe their chronic pain can go away, and then they were doing more and more treatments, um, and then it's, like, it helped. And, like, it's just insane because, like, they had so little hope, and they were so scared, and they were, like, one of the girls, the one who's, like, um, like, who has the vaginal pain, she, like, was also, like, very, like, depressed, and, like, you could tell it. Like, you could see um, how, like, mentally, like, she was, like, not happy. And it was just really sad. But then when she, like, started, like, the symptoms of her pain were, like, lessening, she got really happy and she got excited and she, like, got hope that, like, maybe it'll end. And they were talking about how not a lot of people understand chronic pain and how even some doctors will deny them and be, like, your chronic pain isn't actually chronic pain, it's just this, like, I'll give you some medication, you'll be fine, and they don't believe them when they tell them how, like, drastic the pain is, and how it's always there constantly, and then there have been dozens of people who have told them that they can treat the pain, like, give them so many promises and so much hope, and then it doesn't deliver, and so, like, they've just, like, gone through, like, so much, um, like, with their chronic pain, and, like, it's just that, like, I don't know, like, it's just really, like, sad to think about how, like, so many people like them are, like, in pain and, like, people are doubting them and not believing them. And I always thought that having a mental, like, illness was worse than having a physical illness because I thought, well, physical illness, like, I mean, I know it's really difficult and some of them are extremely terminal and extremely painful, but, like, at least people can tell that you have it and, like, they're at least trying to give you treatment where a lot of people with mental health issues, like they don't know the signs. They don't know that they have an illness or if they do, people like doubt them and even their own family members will like reject them and tell them that, no, you don't have this. And it's just really, fr or some people will like judge you and think that you're crazy because of your mental illness. And so I've always kind of had this like little bias that like mental illness is kind of worse than physical illnesses or chronic pain or any kind of thing like that and I didn't realize how many like physical illnesses and like like chronic illnesses and stuff or terminal illnesses like they don't really have that many symptoms either or they don't have any like like obvious ones that like the doctors can like fully like identify and then there's even more illnesses that are like physical and the doctors can't even like know what they are like they don't know what they are at all and it, like it's just like never discovered before and like it's just crazy to think about and it kind of like opened my eyes a little bit and just be like kind of like a little bit arrogant and thinking that just because of your pain that you've gone through with your mental illnesses you think that people who don't have mental illnesses and have physical illnesses like have it less worse just because it's slightly more obvious even though sometimes it's not more obvious like that's just kind of like stupid of me <laughs> like I make so many stupid decisions some of them are so subconscious that I don't even realize them until something like this happens and then I'm just kind of like bitch slapped in the face and I'm just like you were a fucking dumbass <laughs> like <laughs> um so yeah and then, like, there's just so much, like, emotional, like, pain to go along with, like, your physical pain that they're going through as well. Because, like, that one girl who has, like, a vaginal, like, chronic pain, like, she can't be sexually active like an average girl. Like, she can't do it physically. It's too painful. Like, she can't even urinate or... What is the proper term for... I mean, the medical term for pooping. I don't know. <laughs> Um, just try to sound professional, okay? Like, uh, this doesn't work when you're, like, 17 years old and, like, <laughs> barely a junior, okay? No. Um, so, um, but, like, she can't, like, 
like it's just too painful and like she has to deal with a lot of like rejection from like partners and stuff because they're just kind of like I can't be in a relationship where I'm not sexually like active and like it's just really sad and then also like throughout the day she has to go through like like times where she just can't move and she she has to have her pads and everything and take her medication and everything and like that's really difficult to deal with and so like it's really difficult for someone to like be in a relationship with someone like that and so she's dealt with a lot of like insecurities with that as well and then same with the other girl who has like it in the face like she is a little bit more open with um her sexual experiences and uh blowjobs and stuff and she has to tell them that I can't do a blowjob because I have chronic pain in my face and they're just kind of like oh <laughs> those were exact words like I'm not like I'm not exaggerating anything like she I think that's why I like her she's like oh my god I like both of them but I think I like I'm a little bit more uh like her the other one better who's like more like a little bit and like a little bit. <laughs> um but she, uh, she's funny. Oh, yeah, I love her. But, um, she, um, and I love how they both have, like, such strength. Like, because one of them is, like, extremely, like, like, not only does she have a disability physically, but she has a mental disability, too, because, like, she has depression and, like, agoraphobia and, like, just, like, a lot of other stuff that is caused from her physical pain and she's just suffering so much but she's still living and she's still like trying her hardest to like live her best life even though she's had to sacrifice so many of her dreams because she was telling us she when she was like fresh out of high school and like going to college she got accepted at this college that she dreamed of going to in london but she had to like decline it because she couldn't handle like being in london because like her pain was too much so she had to come back and like not pursue her dream because of that chronic pain and then just like and she's so strong because she's still like I mean she could have easily just given up but she hasn't and she's still trying and like it's so beautiful and then the other girl she's like so strong and like I think she's strong in the more of like the traditional sense where most people think of strength where she's kind of like she's like not like she kind of like angry a little bit and like a little bit more tough chick and um so like but they're both like incredibly strong in their own ways and like I really respect them because like that's just insane to have to deal with and then that, I think that the one girl who has it in her face um and her nerves she um she talked about the reason why because she was born without that chronic illness I mean pain I don't know why I keep saying illness oh it's frustrating okay I'm sorry but anyways chronic pain she wasn't born with it she had surgery like I don't remember how many years ago but she had surgery a long time ago and then the doctor fucked up and she like was stuck with her nerves being damaged and chronic pain and um, she's had it for so many years now that she talked about how she doesn't even remember what it's like to not be without pain um <laughs> and she talked about how she tried to sue the doctor but like they couldn't because like she signed papers that was like something you can't sue like if something goes wrong or something so she couldn't sue him and so she was just he was He's still a doctor, and he's still working on patients, and she wasn't able to speak up for the fucking, like, fuck up that he did. Like, at least own up to it, dude. Like, I'm pissed about that. Like, I am so pissed. And so is that girl who has, like, the nerve, like, like messed up and the chronic pain, um, because he ruined her life. Like, and she was talking about how, like, her life, like, declined so much because of that. And, um, I mean, she's still a snarky bitch, though. <laughs> um, and so one of the things that the doctor who was doing the laser treatments to, she was like, I'm not just going to, like, treat your chronic pain. I'm trying to treat your, like, emotional trauma with that chronic pain as well, which I thought was even more insane because, like, psychiatric, like, and, like, just, doctors don't do that like ever like 
they have their one little section and they stick with that little section and then they don't move at all. And she was treating both. And it was just insane. And I, I was just like, she's an amazing doctor. Um, like you can truly care that, truly see that she cares. Sorry, like I cannot speak. I'm so, um, and so like a lot of their process was like, with the girl who has like vaginal um, pain, chronic pain, she went through many, many doctors and gynecologists who told her that her pain was like not that bad and they treated her, treated her with nothing. And so she, her like duty at the end of the, I'm five years old, forgive me. Um, I meant to say forgive me. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but she had to write a letter to all of the doctors who misdiagnosed her and didn't treat her well or didn't treat her properly and ignored her like pleas for help and like her saying that this is chronic pain and she had to write a letter to them saying that like they fucked her over but she like forgives them because in the end she now has treatment and they taught her like a lot of different stuff and like she's okay like it, it the, they like they wrote beautiful letters and like it was so much more beautiful than how I'm like saying it like just trust me it was amazing and beautiful and I cried um and then the other girl who has the like face um, nerves thing, she had to write a letter to the doctor who fucked her over, which honestly I probably wouldn't have been able to do. But that's just because it was new information to me. I mean, if I had to live with it for many, many years, I probably would have ended up like forgiving him as well. But I mean, I did end up forgiving my rapist. So, I mean, <laughs> um, um, <laughs> And my mom and just a lot of other people I've learned to forgive. That's just because I've had time to process it. But, like, whatever. Um, but she ended up, like, telling him that, like, he destroyed her life. Obviously. And she was, like, still... <laughs> but, like, she was telling him how, like, she forgave him because she doesn't want to live with, like, the pain and the, like, frustration and the anger and the hate anymore. Cause it's weighing her down so she says she's forgiving him and then um with like love and pain goodbye and i was like <laughs> like i cried like <laughs> like mm. oh it was a crying moment okay like it was, it was so sad oh but if you want to check it out is i think you just just type in chronic pain and then buzzfeed and then the videos will probably pop up but yeah it's, it's really good. Okay, it's really good. You should check it out. Like, I mean, not everything BuzzFeed uploads is um, exactly nice or, um, <laughs> like, great even or, like, even real. But sometimes they have genuine people there who do great jobs. And then there are other people who, like, suffer a lot and use BuzzFeed as a platform to express that, which is, I think, awesome for BuzzFeed to do. And I think that's what entertainment and, like, media should be. It shouldn't be, like, a place for fake-ass people to gain attention on, you know? Like, it's not just, like, fun and games. And it's not just, like, I don't know. Like, I think everything has a story that deserves to be shared. And everyone, like, yeah. And, like, <sighs> media is the perfect way to express it, but a lot of people abuse that and instead share their own story, but sometimes it's not even their own story. Sometimes they make up stories and, like, want that intention instead of, like, actual, like, important stuff. Because I guarantee you a lot of the stories that, like, people make up are not nearly as interesting as someone's honest to good, like, real-life story. Like, it's probably not half as interesting. It's probably more entertaining or whatever, but like, that's not important. What matters is how the story affects you. So a lot of the people who are compulsive liars and like lie a lot, like they have the most incredible lives and they have like so much that they could share and they don't because they feel insecure about those, like the things that they've gone through in their life. But that's what makes your life Better. That's what makes your life special. It's what makes your life different, and that's what deserves to be shared. Not your made-up story, just because you want more attention, or you think that like you can divert someone's attention from your own actual real life story. Sorry, kind of uh, 
self-reflecting on <laughs> my past where I lied so compulsively throughout like most of my childhood. Not very well either. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is my second video or third video for today because I did the gaming video. Then I did another video where I talked deeper. And then this video because like I just... I just talk a lot, okay? Like, I got a lot of shit to talk about. <laughs> okay, yeah, bye.